Hello Internet, welcome to Antenna tutorial series. In this tutorial, I am discussing a very interesting antenna type which is popularly known as fractal antennas. I'll be discussing a few examples of fractal antennas, why are they made in the first place and uh, their characteristics and their applications also. Fractal antennas are are designed to obtain radiation patterns and input impedances similar to longer antennas keeping the size of the antenna really very small. Now if we want to understand the construction of fractal antennas and how are they influencing um, enhanced performance over over traditional antennas we must understand the meaning of fractal first now we look into the dictionary meaning of fractal it says that it's a geometrical figure which has same statistical characteristics as as a whole now this might just just look a vague definition to what fractal antennas actually do in real life. <clears throat> now I'll take up an example of a fractal antenna and I'll show you how these antennas enhance the performance. Now for example if if we are working on a lambda by 2 dipole antenna whose geometry will be a, say, a simple straight line. Now one way to enhance the performance of this antenna is to increase the length of the antenna without, without changing the space uh, which is being occupied by this antenna. Now how do I do that? What I can do is, if I divide the whole length of this antenna into three parts, I'll draw it again. What I'm doing is, I'm dividing the whole length of the antenna into three parts, and I'm placing some additional length of wire in one third portion of the antenna thereby increasing the length of the antenna by some amount but the antenna is still taking that much space in the three dimensional three dimensional space in which we are trying to place this antenna now fractal antennas are are designed in such a way that we want to keep the volume of the antenna or the area occupied by the antenna to be constant but we want to increase the size or the length of the wire which is associated with the antenna. Increasing the length of the wire associated with the antenna will result in enhanced current distributions thereby making the antenna a multi-band antenna. Now I'm taking up an example of a very popular fractal antenna which is Coach Fractal. Now this this is the simplest and the most basic kind of a fractal antenna and it is derived from a lambda by 2 antenna and before we design a coach fractal it is important to understand the theory behind coach fractal which says that a coach curve is generated by replacing the middle third of each straight line with a bent section of wire and that is what I've done here I've taken the middle third 
and I've replaced it with a bent wire section and I'm gonna do that progressively as I move from one one factor to the other <clears throat> for example uh, if I take up another iteration of this modification what I'll do is I'll take up all the straight lines that I have in hand so I have one two three and four straight lines now I'll do the same thing with these straight lines as I, as I did with the main big straight line I'll I'll divide each of these straight lines into three parts and I'll take the middle third and I'll put in a bent wire section in each of them so that'll result in in a figure something like this so this section a bent is introduced again in this section a bent is introduced a bent is introduced here and finally a bent is introduced here so all the straight lines all the four straight lines are further made into increased wire lengths by inserting a bend so we would say that from the basic antenna I inserted a gauche curve and found my first iteration and from there I'm on to my second iteration and if I make a third iteration of this antenna I'll have a lot many straight lines I'll have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 I'll have 16 straight lines which are going to be very very small but I can still divide these smaller straight lines into three parts and I'll take the middle third and insert a bent wire in them so that would look even more complicated something like this I hope I'm not missing out on and so on now this is how the geometry of Koch antennas will look after many iterations now you can see that the area occupied by these modified Koch antennas are almost the same as it was in the case of a simple lambda by 2 antenna however the length has increased many times so we we put in additional lengths of wires in at different stages of iterations and if you look into the formula the length of Koch is the total length which was the actual length that we started off with multiplied by 4 by 3 raised to the power n so this is this is how the length of the antenna increases thereby increasing uh, two things it affects two things one um, it increases the bandwidth of the antenna 
and <clears throat> secondly uh, it improves the impedance and these are the two most important parameters which are taken care of while designing an antenna and if we could improve on these two parameters without without the increase of space then that that is a great thing and this is what fractal antennas try to achieve <coughs> now i'll take up an e example of a Cauch loop now one good thing about fractal antennas is that <coughs> it is not only applicable to linear wire antennas but these modifications can also be done on aperture antennas for example if we have a triangular antenna applying the same Cauch curve on each of the straight lines of this triangular antenna so right now we have three straight lines we'll take the middle third and insert some additional wire so that will look something like this So this amount of wire is added onto a simple triangular antenna. Now this will be known as the first iteration. And this second iteration will be more complicated in which we shall have A structure like this <coughs> now I hope I'm clear about <coughs> inserting the additional wires in the straight lines by taking the middle third and to make it more clear I'll just mark down all the straight lines on which I've inserted additional wires and this will be known as second iteration and similarly we could go on to make many more iterations and they'll start to look like <coughs> they'll start to look like shapes of an amoeba or or shapes which are inspired from the nature and if you look into the the origin of the word fractal it it says like doing fractions of of an antenna and improving on them so we're taking up a fraction of an antenna improve it then we take up the new fractions and then we keep on improving them <coughs> now I'd like to put forward a few formulae now the area of coach upon area of a circular loop have a ratio of 0.65 now this goes to show that if we do four iterations of of an aperture antenna that reduces the area of <coughs> the antenna by if by an amount of 35% and 
if we look into the perimeter of coach upon the perimeter of circular loop it has a ratio of Two point six. So, <clears throat> which is an interesting fact. What we have achieved by making a fractal antenna by using a Koch curve in this particular case is that the area of the antenna has reduced by an amount of thirty-five percent, which is a good, good thing. And the perimeter of the Koch antenna has increased. 2.5 times which is again a very good thing because uh, the uh, the longer the wire we have in an antenna the longer uh, can be the possibilities of current distribution in the antennas and there is a possibility of sending a multi-band signal multi-frequency signal on this antenna now so far we've discussed the the implementation of Koch curve to design Koch fractals for linear wire antennas and loop antennas and we have looked into the improvement of length and we've looked into the improvement in area the area is reduced and we've looked into the improvement of length in loop antennas also in terms of perimeter so everything looks good so far so good I'll give an example of one more design uh, theory which is known as Minkowski loop Now similar to similar to Koch curve this this can be implemented on aperture antennas with with a slight modification for example I have a rectangular aperture antenna the first iteration is obtained by dividing each straight line into three parts with taking the middle third but now we are not going to insert a bent wire instead we we are further going to increase the insertion of wire by inserting a rectangular or square like structure so instead of adding a bent wire we are putting in a rectangular type of a structure in the middle third so the first iteration will look something like this and if we go to the next iteration please understand when we inserted a bent wire it resulted in two additional formation of straight lines two additional straight lines were formed but now we have formed three additional straight lines so that will increase the performance of the fractal antenna so this is the basic difference between a Koch curve and a Minkowski loop. Now if we were to draw the second iteration that will be even more complicated.
so I've just been able to draw this portion in the second iteration and this has taken up a much more complicated form so that is how the iterations will happen thereby resulting in in a larger parameter as compared to Gauche fractal and <clears throat> then we have one more popular technique by which fractals are made and it's known as Sierpinski sieve now it is applicable on on geometrical symmetrical structures for example a very popular example is using a triangular loop antenna and what we do is we insert a symmetrical geometrical object which is inverted inside this geometrical object for example this is a triangle we'll insert another triangle but it should be inverted and that should fit just right in this triangle so that would happen if we do something like this and <clears throat> now not only does it does it provide us with additional lengths of wire within the within the fractal but it it divides the area into many other parts in which we will further put in those geometrical structures like this in the second iteration we'll do something like this in the third iteration we can we can do something like this and this is a very very popular fractal antenna and the basis of this is the Sierpinski sieve uh, method of making loops or iterations <coughs> and you can imagine how many further subdivisions of this area are happening whenever we draw a triangle and we can we can possibly do an infinite iterations within this within this area of triangle now coming to the advantages and disadvantages of of fractal antennas the the main advantage of fractal antenna which makes it so popular and and the talk of the town is is the miniaturization Now we are wanting to uh, place high bandwidth, high power, greater impedance antennas into smaller devices and only fractal antennas can solve that problem because the area remains the same and all the other parameters they just shoot up. And I've mentioned this point a lot many times, better Im input impedance matching again this point is wide band or multi band antenna now coming to the disadvantages they they show all these advantages the fractal antennas they show all these advantages up to certain number of iterations if we increase the number of iterations to let us say a point where it becomes way too complicated then gain loss occurs uh, I'll specifically explicitly mention here that this happens above certain iterations 
then uh, the complexity increases a lot it is not easy to fabricate these then there is numerical limitations uh, if you look into the formulas here they have numerical limitations when r tends to 0 and when n tends to higher values they have numerical limitations and finally uh, all these benefits they start to diminish after a few iterations but uh, even even with these set of disadvantages they they certainly qualify to be one of the most sought out antennas these days and their studies is <coughs> in vogue and a lot of people are working on them to constantly improve their performance and I hope this discussion on fractal antennas with with different design techniques was helpful if you found this video helpful then please consider subscribing to my channel that will help me a lot and as always thank you for watching this video and other videos in this playlist uh, you have a good day and a good life bye